Welcome back to Vampire. It's time to explore more of the Skull Enclave underneath London, but before that, I want to examine this sturdy blood sample. I got it really recently somewhere down here and I forgot to look at it. Ah, next level of Healing Serum. Nice. Yeah, uh, I used one Light Regeneration Serum during the boss fight with uh, Fergal or whatever their name was, and it really didn't restore that much. So getting the next level would definitely be good. I wonder, if you have two different tiers, then which one does it use when you go to press the button? Can you switch them out, or...? How does that work, actually? Light blood serum, light regeneration potion... Okay, you can just choose to switch them out. Gotcha. Tried to talk with everybody, looked everywhere, looted everything. I don't think there's anything more I can do here. I feel like a lot is un left undone, especially that strange person who's hiding out here. I, I couldn't do anything more with them, as far as I can find, anyway. So I'm following the arrows to get to Sean Hamilton? I forget everybody's name. I'm trying to get to their secret entrance. I just assumed that was necessary. Looks like it was. Love those running sounds. Thud, 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 thud. Whoa. What the fuck is this? It's like a human butcher shop. It's locked, all right. Sean Hampton's night shelter? Did it say? Oh. This is where they feed. Off of the dead bodies. So yeah, it is a human butcher shop. Fucking grim. But, I mean, it's true. They're not killing people. Assuming they've sourced these from local organic producers. <laughs> oh, look at that. Nothing says... Nothing says godlike in, in Jesus like a cross. And some saws next to it for cutting up human remains to eat them. How's that for a picture? Oh, we're right here already. What's up, Sean? Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Would you like to take communion with me now? Sean, are you eating raw flesh? It is the sacred flesh of the mortal lamb. Our Lord's bountiful transmutation for the sustenance of his believers. Thank you, Lord. I am your most humble servant. So, true to your word, you waited for my return. I told you, Dr. Reed. I was a man to be trusted. Did you have words with the poor Harriet? They are really disturbing, just the way they act, and the way they look, but especially the way they act. They're creepy. They're very creepy. They keep jittering. Look at them. Not like a... not like a character, like, intentional jitter, but like a bug jitter. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that, John? There it is again. You hide your game well. I kind of want to go with that, but I don't know if that's true. I just kind of want to hear what Jonathan says. This shelter is the tip of the iceberg. You hide your game well, I'll give you that. We are God's children, Dr. Reed. One and all. 
and he's determined to save us. Does this place belong to you? How can you be so certain you can keep it open? This warehouse was once property of the Dawson family, but has been bequeathed me through donation. So you have the run of the place and no one's taken notice? As long as we keep to ourselves, we interest no one. This is a haven, and I pray it remains so for eons to come. The Dawsons? The wealthiest family in London? Have they a clue as to what goes on here? Not at all. The donation was made before the war. The building was run down. I never met Aloysius Dawson myself. What will be the result if you continue to assist both Skulls and the living? For the last decade, that's what's been happening. And they found a better life. What's to change? You're forgetting the epidemic. Things can go south very quickly. I've seen it. Oh, these are terrible times. Only those pure of heart shall prevail. Harriet, Miss Jones has been behaving in a most violent manner. She's going to need special attention. That's precisely the reason I brought her here. To meet old Bridget. She's the guide Harriet requires. Who is this old Bridget? I don't know, Doctor. She rarely speaks of her past, but I know she has a long one. She's likely the oldest soul in the city. I don't know about that. There's supposedly an elder here. Harriet is possessed by her hatred. You cannot let her roam free. She's dangerous. She has joined her own client, Doctor. Old Bridget is a saint to the younger Skulls. Guiding them to salvation and peaceful existence. I believe I've learned all I need to know. I'm certain you've killed no one, but one day I believe you'll cross the line. Logic is a false prophet. Faith is the only path to salvation. What do you mean? We have been blessed with God's eternity. We are the instruments of his divine will. We shall feed the hungry forever and ever. Amen. Let's simply agree that all are one and the same. In death, I mean. Give yourself over to God, Doctor. Expel your urges and kneel before the Lord in praise. These urges. You know the hunger will never be satisfied. I've come to embrace the everlasting craving. I have sworn to feed only upon the flesh of the dead. It is now my sacrament. Take, eat. This is my body. So saith the Lord. God, they're creepy. Yeah, I was feeling like this was giving me a choice to kill them. Ah, uh. uh, what do I do? I don't trust them. I don't. I really don't. But, on the other hand, they haven't killed anyone, right? I mean, they haven't. I don't trust that it will stay that way, but maybe it will. They're so fucking creepy. It's interesting that I guess I could have had maybe a third option if I had done something. I don't know what. Hmm. I don't know if they're going to kill someone. But I doubt they can stay here for long without being found out by the, the guard of Pruin or whatever vampire hunters decide to come through. But I don't know. If they want to take that risk... Fine. Hope I don't regret this. I believe you, Sean. In fact, I envy the peace you found and will remember it. There is love and compassion in your heart. You only need to give it wings. Thank you for your...
kind words, Sean. Continue your noble efforts. You are a good man in bad times. Keep to the light, my friend. Like all my flock, you have a home here. Any time you're in the neighborhood. Just level up my mesmerize. Fail a bunch of stuff with Sean Hampton. I don't think failing hints is always bad, though. It just seems to be kind of a natural consequence of deciding something. And you choose a, a certain fork in the path, and you can't go back. Can I... Do I have the chance to kill them in the future? Probably not. I can't even talk with them right now. I really hope I don't regret that. Whoa. Shit. Another corpse thrown in the streets. Someone's playing a very sick game. Who is it? I know this brooch. This is my mother's. A birthday gift from father. What the fuck? This is a message to me. This is for me. 29 Pretty Orchard Street. That's near Poplar's district. Why would this man carry off my mother's brooch? I must go there. I don't think they would. I think the, the person is entirely incidental. They were just left there as a message for me. Somebody wants to taunt me, I guess. Dead man's wallet. A cheap leather wallet found on a corpse left in front of Sean Hampton's uh, night shelter. The wallet contains official paper of repatriation and demobilization with the address of the victim. 29 Pretty Orchard Street. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Yes, there's the body right in front of us. Did you see what happened to him? Actually, yes. He was thrown from the roof like a vulgar log. Who could have done that? Who? Well, a vampire, of course. Look, bite marks on the neck and lacerations here. There is definitely a vampire close by. Why is it that you sound so... afraid? You didn't see it. He was dead before he hit the ground. The strength required to do such a thing, well... It beggars belief. Goodbye. And good... You again. Did you see what just... No, I didn't. And I don't care. Really? Why is that? Because this sexist pig is one of the four men who blacklisted me. Good riddance, if you ask me. Well, you don't say. What? Well, I'll... Well, I guess I don't need to feel bad about them being killed. Glad to... Did you see... No. I was coming back to the shelter from work when I heard an awful scream and there was this man dead just in front of the building you saw nothing at all no i told you just that awful woman's scream a woman's scream are you sure of course it was terrifying i thought it was my sister so i ran but it was a man i've never seen round here before who was the scream from then goodbye wish i could get on the roof but no way Alright, I need to go to the person's place of residence, which I guess is just somewhere... No wait, this is part of hide and seek. Just... Wait, so the answer to the why the person is hiding down there is just somewhere here? Interesting. 
Yeah, that's the main quest. That's where their apartment is. Back on the north docks. Well, before we go there, we got plenty more business to finish up here. For one, we still need to find the uh, thieves. Who's thieves? Giselle Paxton's thieves. That's what I was trying to do before I accidentally went into the level transition to go into the sewers. Got a couple enemies here. Uh, we can avoid those people. Oh, right. I slept inside of the sewers, so everybody's respawned. Okay. This could be the public house to the packs mentioned. I should investigate further. Giselle's stolen money. Everyone has some unethical ways of financing their Would you stop that screaming? Like right underneath us. I've identified the men who stole from you. You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it! Did you find the money, too? Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. I'm... I'm... Well... Thank you. So. Will you give the money back to your comrades, then? Fuck those bastards who fired me. I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. He was killed recently. I know you were friends with Miss Gillingham's son, Jack. Tell me about his death. Jack's murder has been a shock to the neighborhood. A sign that the situation is now out of control. Why is that? There has always been tension between the wet boot boys and members of the trade union. But a murder? That's a first. Who killed him? No one will ever know. One thing is certain. While Jack was alive, I had one less reason to drink. That makes the question of why so sad particularly galling, but again, for the sake of completing this dialogue tree. Why does that upset you so much? 
I wish I had found the time and words to tell him how important he was to me before it was too late. Another failure for Giselle Paxton. Been looking around this area to find out why that person's hiding. And I might have found a place that will have the answer. Uh, actually, just across from the entrance to that manufacturing place, there's this area that apparently I've never been into. That door straight in front of me can be open. There's a person I've never spoken with here. Please, sir. Come and have a gander. <laughs> I thought they were going to say stop stealing my stuff. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you need any help? Rest assured, I will help you, sir. Martin Nightingale, at your service. Please, take a look at my wares. Ha, <laughs> your merchandise. I don't really see anything worth having, no offense. None taken, sir. But please, I need to eat. Perhaps if you keep looking, you'd see something that takes your fancy. I see that photo of my family as well as everybody else's family. They're healthy. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? Have you got any friends around these parts? Not really. Miss Gillingham smiles and says kind words, but I know she's lost her marbles, especially since her son died. Tell me about this crazy woman. Madness is often mistaken for other conditions. <laughs> the poor woman's mad, all right. Kind and all, but she has so much trouble remembering things. She's taken me for a son more than once. Wonder where they are. I haven't met them yet. How interesting. I don't suppose you know what happened to her son. Where do you Jack. know Jack died? Rumor has it he tried to tackle some gang lads. I didn't know him well, but I heard he was a nice enough chap. Let me be frank. You're as much of a businessman as I am a werewolf, right? Who the hell are you to question me? It's hard enough to stay clean when you don't have a place to sleep. I'm doing my best here. I meant no offense, Mr. Nightingale. I was merely pointing out the fact that you're unlikely to survive long if you continue wandering this path. And what should I do then, sir? Should I join the wet boot boys like so many others? No thanks. I'd rather be a bad seller than a dead gang member. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you, Jonathan? You're a shitty sales business person. And? Okay. Why not try seeking help instead of peddling your wares? I'm sure there are people around here that would gladly help. There's always the night asylum. I heard it's run by a very nice man, but I'm no beggar. Not yet, at least. There is no shame in asking for help, my boy. Sometimes it can even be the best course of action. I don't feel okay with that. I'm gonna make a name for myself, and I'll do it by myself. That's... It so far, yeah, let's see what they got. Show me what you have to offer then, Mr. Nightingale. Wait, Jonathan, what do you mean they have nothing worth buying? What the hell? This, this is quite a bit of stuff. Vampire factions and skulls. A page probably stolen from some sort of manual or guide. Oh, I'm definitely gonna buy that. Pretty damn expensive, too. A small wooden music box containing a folded letter. Well, I don't care about the music box that much, but I want that letter. Yes. I, every time I see this picture, I think it's like a cord of wood or something. A bunch of wood. But it's just lead rods. Alright. My dear Jack, I write- oh, that's to Gillingham's uh, son, right? I write this letter as long as I have the strength and the will, not that I have something to hide or to fear, except perhaps to forget what I want to tell you. I always knew you'd become someone important, someone good and nice. I knew it since you were a child. When you preferred to read books rather than going to play outside. I knew it when you helped me carry groceries before you went to school and clean the house after you came back. I'm very proud of you, my son. Not only because I am your mother, but also because you deal so well with everything around you. I'm sorry I've recently become such a burden to you. Never forget I love you. I hope you never forget you love me. 
Ended. And what was the other thing? It was... Well, it's not in quest items, so I guess it's lore. Here it is. It's under the story of Ascalon. Vampire and the guard will never have a common interest. Never. Not as long as I live. Not after I die and pass the torch to another leader. I know some of us have witnessed a strange and huge vampire hunting down skulls just like we do. He's well-dressed and seems to speak eloquently. But don't be fooled. If this unknown leech and his friends seem to hate skulls as much as we do, some others offer them safe haven in exchange for obedience. Scouts in the north have reported that strange ceremonies occur in the secluded forests of Scotland. Ceremonies of blood and human sacrifice to old pagan gods. They may be adversaries to the London vampires, but none of these leech factions could be our allies. All vampires must be destroyed, and no alliance will be made between them and us. So maybe this is an id's place? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I come in? I already took my medication, doctor. Uh, but thank you. I'm sorry. Your medication? Have we met before? Don't tease me like that, Jack. Sorry? What? I think I should come in, miss. I'd like to check if everything is okay, what with the epidemic spreading across London. An epidemic, you say? How terrible. I had no idea. But where are my manners? Please do come in, Doctor. You... you are a doctor, yes? Let's take a look around first. Oh, look at that. Actually, I think there's a couple pictures of families. I think there's like two that I keep seeing. They're not all exactly the same. I think there's two of them. Yeah, look at this. There's that one. And then the same one right over there. <laughs> That's so hilarious to me. They really overuse that picture. Ooh, there's a letter here. Unfinished letter. Rodney, I just heard what happened tonight. I ran to your house, but you were already gone, so now I'm writing this note. Is it true you killed him? I can't believe it. Why? What happened? I really need to talk to you now. Please, find a way to contact me when you receive this message. Since I know you can be very cautious and to prove to you that this is not a trap, let's use a code when we meet. I'll whistle my name, Jack, in Morse code, and you'll whistle yours, okay? This way you'll know it it's really me. For now, it's a good thing you're hiding. The wet boot boys are all over the neighborhood claiming they will punish the man who murdered one of them. I'm sure we can make an arrangement to settle things once the heat dies down. So that's why they're hiding, hiding from the wet boot boys. What brings you back here? I heard whispers you had a job at that fancy hospital. I told you my name is Jonathan Reed. Don't you remember? Of course I do. I remember my name too. Gillingham. But you may call me Enid, Doctor. I'm very happy to see you again. Tell me, Enid, why do you feel guilty about your son? I know I'm a burden to my Jack. I know my mind and my thoughts are drifting away. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. This is not your doing, Miss Gillingham. You do not have to apologize for your condition. Of course I don't, Doctor. I've done nothing wrong, I swear it. What exactly are we talking about here? Is anyone taking care of you, Miss Gillingham? My son is always here to take care of me. He's a good boy like that, but I do worry that he needs to start living his own life. I would never say that to him, of course. What can you tell me about this part of town? Oh no, I don't gossip. That would be most unbecoming of a lady such as myself. Who are the more influential figures on the docks? Well, I heard about some terrible illness going around. I would say, in that case, that it's you, Dr. Tippetts. 
they have a headache. Well, I can help them with that, but yeah, there's no simple treatment I could give them to cure whatever it is they have. Probably Alzheimer's, I'm thinking. Do you require medical attention, miss? I'm glad. I'll try my best. Thank you, Doc. Goodbye, Miss Gillian. Wish there was more I could do for them. Because that's it. Now, there is an upstairs here as well. Please, sir. Hmm? Come and have a gander. You talking to me, talking to me from down there? <laughs> Chill. I'm doing other stuff. Whoa, what's this? Oh my god, what the hell happened here? I know it's hard to see, it's super dark, but just... Pile of, like, half-eaten remains and a bunch of blood. Okay. Lots of money left on the tables. Jesus Christ. I was thinking maybe there'd be a blood trail to follow, but it doesn't look like it. If there was, it would show up on the, my vampire vision. Another open place at the opposite end. These places are always so depressing, just covered in... I don't know, a lot of weird stuff. Obviously a lot of like broken, abandoned stuff, a lot of blood and things like that, but then there's also other stuff, like what is this? Looks like a bunch of chalk or mold or something. I don't know, but just places that have obviously been abandoned. I mean, door is just gone. There's no door. Any number of things could have happened. Gangs could have raided the place. Skulls could have broken in. Is there something down there? Oh. Oh, that's ended down there. Well, that's not very comforting. Right above their heads are open, like, open floorboards going into a room that anybody could walk inside of. That scared the hell out of me. I'd always it's be been looking a while up there. since you last paid me a visit. I came to visit you last night. Don't you recall? I'm sorry to say, but you haven't yet paid me for the clock I brought you last time. The clock? Oh, yes. I found a broken clock in the living room, and I... I couldn't remember where it came from. You broke it? Oh, that is unfortunate. It was such a beautiful piece of work. Oh, you piece of shit. Really? Oh, I'm so clumsy these days. I'm so sorry. How much was it? This will be enough. I can't make you pay the whole price if it's broken. That's so kind of you. I'm going to make some tea now. It will be enough until the next time you forget it, you old bat. What a piece of shit. Well, they're gonna die. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're gonna have a chat and maybe a bite of this person.